All right, replacing the thermal pads on this Asus Tough 3080. Never done something like this before, but I'm excited to do it. Got my gamers Nexus mod mat recently, along with their tool set as well. I'll have all the required tools in the description of the video. All right, let's get started. Just gonna start removing screws from the back plate. All right, on this X bracket, I'm gonna evenly unscrew these four screws. All right, we're just gonna try to wiggle Maybe do a little pry, wiggle this heatsink off, and start there. Oh. All right, I'm gonna leave this guy. I think that's a half millimeter, and I don't even have that thickness thermal pad anyway, but all these others should be two millimeter. So we'll get started there. Had these little plastic razor blades for a long time. They come in handy. Hoping it works out for something like this. That worked a lot better than trying to pick it off with my fingernails. Wasn't really sure how easily this stuff was gonna come off. Gonna wipe this down with some ISO. Okay, cotton swabs are not working that well. I'm actually using 70% iso alcohol. I'd probably recommend going higher, like 90 plus, uh, because it dries more quickly. Trying to loosen it so this paper towel with the ISO can pick it up a little easier. It's being a little more stubborn than I thought it would be. Alright, I'm gonna leave that plastic on for now. And then once I get all of them put on, I'll remove them all at the same time so I'm not accidentally touching it. Let's keep cutting them out. Ooh, let's clean off of these guys. Let's get this guy back on. All right, gonna try to 
pick off these stickers and then a new thermal pad will be going here, which wasn't there originally. So we'll want to make contact from these heat pipes to here and hopefully removing the stickers will help that thermal transfer. All right, it's not perfect, but we're gonna keep going. All right, let's get this back plate back on. Okay, I've compiled the maximum GPU memory junction temperature along with the hash rate for each of the GPU configurations during mining. So obviously with the memory temperature, lower is better, and with the hash rate, higher is better. With the NiceHash Quick Miner on the light power mode, it was going up to 100 degrees Celsius. And this is where I started looking into replacing the thermal pads because I didn't want my graphics card to be sustaining 100 degrees Celsius. I thought it could do better. In the meantime, before replacing the thermal pads, I adjusted the core clock, the memory clock, and the power limit uh, to lower the temperature, of course, at the cost of lowering the hash rate as well. But I was more comfortable with uh, under 100 degrees sustained. So these two are using the exact same settings on the GPU. The only difference is this was recorded before the thermal pad replacement and this was after the thermal pad replacement. So as you can see, the hash rate is essentially the same, but we see a massive drop of 14 degrees Celsius in the memory junction temperature. So this indicates the new thermal pads are significantly helping with cooling the VRAM. So now knowing that the cooling is improved, I went back into MSI Afterburner and tinkered with the core clock, memory clock, and power limit settings again for the GPU, and ultimately, achieved 99 mega hash per second hash rate and just a maximum temperature of 90 degrees at the VRAM. I'll post the configuration I had in the MSI Afterburner in the description below. But all in all, the thermal pad replacement was 100% worth it. I'm definitely glad I did it. Quite frankly, the these cards should come like this. I don't know why they don't. 
But if you're deciding whether or not to perform this modification, I would highly recommend it. It really wasn't that hard. Otherwise, if you have any questions, drop them down below. And thanks for watching.